Segmentum Solar, the cradle of mankind. Here is Terra, known to antiquity as Earth, the heart of the Imperium of Man. The Imperium of Man, a million worlds scattered across an uncaring galaxy. A million worlds forever under threat from the machinations of cursed traitors and perfidious Xenos. It is an empire consumed by war, by the very battle for survival itself. For there is no peace amongst the stars. Ten thousand years have passed since the galaxy burned in the fires of the Horus Heresy. Ten millennia since the greatest of the Emperor's Primarchs fell into the grasp of eternal damnation and tore the galaxy asunder. Horus Lupercal may be dead, his body ashes and his memory the stuff of a cursed legend, but the wounds he wrought yet gape in the hide of an embattled Imperium. For the battle against Chaos knows no end. Many of Horus' servants survived the civil wars, and they have not forgotten their defeat. When the War Master fell, they retreated to the Eye of Terror and waged battle anew. Greatest of these was Abaddon the Despoiler, Horus' greatest living heir. Abaddon took the title of War Master for his own and embarked upon a long and bloody campaign to succeed where his fallen master had failed. Twelve Black Crusades he launched against the Imperium of Man. Twelve world-shattering campaigns to forever alter the balance of power. Mankind languishes in a tumultuous galaxy. Its potential shackled by a corpse on a gilded throne. We must look to the past for our salvation. To the primal gods who shape all that is. Let there be war upon this false Imperium. Let the galaxy burn. For 10,000 years, the Eye of Terror has spewed its ageless horrors into the galaxy, gnawing at the eternal glories of the Imperium, at the very soul of mankind itself. And for every one of those 10,000 years, the fortress world of Cadia has held the gate closed an adamantium bastion, granted strength by flesh and bone, and seeded purpose by faith in the Emperor's holy light. But as the darkness grew ever deeper, and the blaze of the Astronomicon guttered like a wind-blown candle, The Eye of Terror, Pulse, its baleful energy spilling anew across the stars. With a shriek that echoed through nightmares from Medusa to Ultramar, the Black Fleet slipped its moorings. An endless tide of heretics, traitors, demons, and madmen, whose desperate fealty was given over to a single damned soul. Abaddon the Despoiler, inheritor of the arch-traitor Horus's reviled legacy, the 13th Black Crusade, herald to a fresh age of nightmare, had begun. Stalwart Cadia would be the first to feel its wrath. The siege of Cadia Secundus had begun. The forces of the Despoiler came in numbers uncounted, 
but the walls of Castle Kraft held. Even in that darkest of days, the flame of humanity's valor burned bright. With faith burning in their hearts, the defenders held the Chaos Hordes at bay, uncaring of the losses they bore in exchange. But flesh fails and faith flickers. With every bloody moment, Abaddon's forces drew closer to victory. The Cadian Sector is amongst the most vital of the Imperium's defenses, guarding as it does the only known navigable route out of the Eye of Terror. So long as the Cadian Gate holds, the Imperium remains secure. After 10,000 years of defiance, Cadia finally fell during the opening stages of the 13th Black Crusade. Now it is little more than an honored memory and an example to those who strive in the service of mankind. Cadia had fallen, but its name and legend lived on. Warriors of mankind, the Emperor has tested us, and we have not been found wanting. By his will and our faithfulness, we have journeyed through darkness, through fire, and now emerge into the brilliant light of a new dawn. But that light shines only so long as we keep it fed. Through our sacrifice, through the valor of the Imperial Navy, mankind shall endure. There is no peace in these stars, only a crucible of war in which our faith is forever tested. Our service we owe to our comrades, our lives we spend for the Imperium, and our souls, now and forevermore, belong to the Emperor. The Space Marines, genetically modified warriors who know no fear, spearhead every counter-assault, taking the battle to the heart of the foe. They shall be my finest warriors, these men who give themselves to me. Like clay, I shall mold them, and in the furnace of war, forge them. They will be of iron will and steely muscle. In great armor shall I clad them, and with the mightiest guns will they be armed. They will be untouched by plague or disease. No sickness will blight them. They will have tactics, strategies, and machines, such that no foe can best them in battle. They are my bulwark against the terror. They are the defenders of humanity. They are my space marines. And they shall know no fear. From the smoke-wreathed horror of Adeptus Mechanicus Forge Worlds sail warships of fearsome potency, their weapons blessed by the Machine God, and their crews dedicated to the Omnissiah's holy cause. I understood the weakness of my flesh. It disgusted me. I craved the strength and certainty of steel. I aspired to the purity of the blessed machine. Your kind claim to your flesh as if it will not decay and fail you. One day the crew biomass that you call the temple will wither, and you will beg my kind to save you. But I am already saved. For the machine is immortal. The Scholar Progenium molds callow flesh into leaders, 
officers of the Imperial Navy, the greatest fleet ever to span the stars. These heroes dedicate their life to the Imperium's defense, confronting the ceaseless threat of chaos wherever it manifests. The war against the Dark Gods and their worshippers is the eternal battle for the soul of mankind, for the future of the galaxy itself. It is the forge upon which true heroes are struck and legends tempered. The Eidolon Sector lies at the heart of the Eye of Terror, at the point where reality bleeds away into the formless tides of the Immaterium. Stronghold of the Despoiler, headwater of every Black Crusade, there is no mortal law here that is not imposed by cruelty, and no physical law beyond the whim of the Dark Gods. The Plague Planet, home of Mortarion and his Death Guard Traitor Legion. This is a world of 10,000 contagions, where skies weep with pus and seas teem with disease. Sortiaris is the current homeworld of the Thousand Suns Traitor Legion. Ringed by the screaming souls of the betrayed dead and blasted by the tides of the warp, it is a planet no sane man would tread without cause, or at least without a numberless army at his back. Oliensis, throne of decadence and bane of many a righteous soul. The world is a living perversion, a deathless monument to the pursuit of pleasure above all else. Though the world's origins are argued over by the Adepts of Terror, it is known that at least one Space Marine chapter met its demise on the Oliensis surface. Reports suggest that those who fall to Oliensis embrace are reborn as blasphemous mirrors of their prior selves, shackled to the will of Slanish. Drakasi, Corn Slaughter Pit. Only the strongest survive the crucible of its arenas, and then only until the favor of the gods turns against them once more. Eidolon itself was once an Eldari world, but now lies shackled by the madness of chaos, with an empire dedicated to each of the chaos powers constantly vying with the others for dominance. It is said that there are more ways to die on Eidolon than anywhere else, Though as no one ever returns, this can be considered little more than rumor. They say that to be an agent of the Imperial Inquisition is to see the true horror of the universe and still have the will to prevail. As with all things, there is another face to the truth. I have looked on the terrors of the universe and cast them down. I have judged billions and forgiven some. I have known victory and touched defeat. And the lesson that all my years as an Inquisitor have taught me is that it is not enough to prevail. We have to endure the poison of history. We have to survive our own sins. Inquisitor, with all respect, is Exterminatus the only solution? Admiral Spire, it is said that heresy is like a tree. Its roots lie in darkness, while its leaves wave in the sun. You can prune away its branches. Even cut the tree to the ground, but it will grow again, ever stronger. Such is the nature of heresy, and why it is so difficult to destroy. Some may question my right to destroy a world of ten billion souls. But those who truly understand, realize that I have no right to let them live. 
No sacrifice is too great. No treachery too small. In the darkness between the stars, the weak and the faithless find no deliverance. We are raised to believe that the God Emperor watches over us all. And so we are charged to cleanse the mutant, the heretic, the alien. We must not falter. We are his sword. We are his wrath. Even in the face of death, we shall not submit. Suffering is our prayer. Faith is our armor. In battle, he offers us redemption. And for those who prove worthy, the Emperor sends forth his angels. Our Imperium is besieged. Across a thousand worlds we fight for our survival. Those that would tear humanity down are legion. Our forces are few. Our enemies, many. There is no respite. There is no mercy. And in our darkest hour, a spiteful universe awakens forgotten evils to break us. Yet still we stand, the last bulwark against the terror. And while we draw breath, we will fight. For in this new dark age, there is only war. In the deepest eons of history, before mankind had even emerged from primordial ooze, the Necrontier dominated the galaxy. But unity receded, even as the bounds of their domain expanded. Fearing the collapse of their civilization, the leaders of the Necrontier assailed the Old Ones, seeking to wrest from them the secret of eternal life. The galaxy blazed with the fires of war. Too late, the Necrontier realized the impossibility of victory. Thus, they embraced damnation. The Star Gods, the Catan, walked amongst them, offering prized immortality and long-sought victory. So ended the Necrontier of old. Betrayed by the ambition of Zarek, the Silent King, they were dragged in chains to the fires of biotransference, transmuted from fragile and radiation-cursed bodies to forms more suited for the ravages of war. Stripped of flesh, of mortality, even of their souls, the Necrontier passed from history. 
Only the Necrons remained. Now enslaved to the will of the Catan, the Necrons at last altered the course of the war. Cosmic battle lines buckled and at last broke beneath a tide of immortal fury. As the last of the Old Ones fell, Zarek led what remained of his people in revolt against their Catan masters. The Star Gods were overthrown, shattered into shards, and forced to serve those they had once ruled. But centuries of war had taken their toll on both the Necrons and the galaxy. To preserve what remained of their empire, the Necrons retreated to Colossal Stasis tombs to sleep away millennia while their domain healed and their rivals passed into dust. Freed from the shackles of time, the passing millennia meant nothing to them. Sixty million years have passed, and the ancient tombs are once more stirring to life. The Necrons, forgotten by all but the Eldari, are returning to claim what was theirs. They will abide no trespassers. The region of space now known as the Eye of Terror was once home to the Eldari Empire. A prideful, sensuous people, the Eldari realized too late the perils of excess. The fourth Chaos God, Slanish, was born from their debauchery, its coming heralded by a psychic scream that shook real space to its foundations and devastated the Eldari. The Crone Worlds are all that remain of the Eldari's fallen domain. They are blighted planets, consumed by the spreading unreality of the Eye of Terror, and twisted to new and nightmarish realities. Though the Crone Worlds are overrun by the servants of the Dark Gods, the Eldari have not entirely abandoned them. They cannot, for only here can the treasured Spirit Stones be harvested and thus the souls of the dying be saved from thirsting slanish. Such expeditions are fraught with peril, for there are few more dangerous places amongst the stars. Many who seek the Crone Worlds do not return. The Eldari have never recovered from the horrors of the Fall. They are a fractured, dwindling population on the brink of extinction. Most dwell aboard star-treading craft worlds, honing their peerless minds along the disciplined paths in the hope of staving off the perils of decadence and thus preventing a second, final catastrophe. But not all Eldari can bear the rigidity of craft world life. Some depart their homes, seeking adventure amongst the stars as corsairs. Such lives are fraught with danger, but are also rich with excitement these outcasts can be found in every corner of the galaxy, blazing a brief but exhilarating trail before madness claims them. The Drakari too live outside the structures of the Eldari path. Corrupt and cruel, they keep Slanish at bay, not with discipline and spirit stones, but by feasting on the torment of others. Raiders and slavers all, the Drakari are a blight upon the galaxy, as selfish as they are sadistic as untrustworthy as they are cunning. But in recent days, the barriers between the Eldari factions have begun to crumble, with ever more gathering beneath the banner of one named Ivrain. These Inari keep their beliefs hidden, as hidden as their intentions. Orcs are amongst the deadliest of the Xenos races. Multitudinous, belligerent, and possessed of brutal cunning, they spread across the stars like a green tide. Even in the war-riven sectors around the Eye of Terror, forever beset by chaos, they rank amongst the greatest threats. As battle raged between the Imperium and the dread forces of chaos, the Orcs gained a foothold upon ravaged worlds, using them as staging areas from which they could slingshot deeper into Imperial territory. Orc technology is ramshackle, but terrifyingly effective. Combining mismatched components, 
scavenged gear and intuitive leaps to forge weapon systems whose inner workings baffle the most experienced of the Imperium's adepts, but lack for nothing in sheer unbridled firepower. In much the same way, an Orc Warlord can take a multitude of squabbling clans and forge them into an unstoppable army. Such a war has the sheer unbridled might necessary to conquer the stars themselves, leaving naught but rubble in its wake. As its momentum grows, so do its numbers grow, swollen by green skins drawn to the promise of bloodlust, teeth and loot. The Orcs plague the whole galaxy from end to end, with their ceaseless warring and strife. They are a warlike, crude and highly aggressive green-skinned Xenos race, organized in a primitive and brutal society, rooted so deeply in war that peace is utterly incomprehensible to them. Their ships are often ill-kempt, unreliable rust buckets kept in operation only by the constant effort of Orc mech boys and their Gretchen slaves. Orc pirate attacks are brutally direct, with their ships rushing headlong towards their target, guns firing wildly as they come. They cannot be bargained with or bought, save with weapons that they will inevitably turn against those who try to bribe them. Orcs have a need for speed. Their ships commonly mount a plethora of thrusters, boosters, and extra drives, usually all wired up to a prominent red button in the cockpit. experience have I learned that underestimating the greenskins is a fast route to the grave. The only thing that the Imperial ship crews fear even more than traveling in the warp is traveling in the warp while there is a storm raging. The light of the Emperor's Astronomicon can no longer guide the navigators, and entire sectors can be isolated, preventing any help from afar. The chaos, at home in the distortion of reality, becomes an even greater threat. And even the most experienced navigators can only hope for a safe arrival at their destination. Eternal God Emperor, preserve us from the dangers of the void. The Tyranids, the Great Devourer. In all the stars, there has never been a Xenos race more inimical to the survival of mankind. Indeed, they are the bane of all other life. Their origins are but poorly understood the stuff of rumor and supposition and nightmare. The adepts of Mars believe that a single unknowable consciousness guides the high fleets about their voracious purpose. This consciousness knows only unquenchable hunger. 
Hive ships serve as synapse nodes, spreading the influence of the Tyranid hive mind across the stars. Such is the hive mind's suffocating will that the warp is distorted for light years around. Confusion and terror spread before the hive fleets advance as dreams darken and madness spreads. As the high fleets advance, the suffocating embrace quenches the Emperor's light and drowns doomed worlds in psychic shadow. But the greatest threat comes from within. Foul creatures known as gene stealers infiltrate unvigilant worlds. A patriarch arises from the population's subverted flesh and projects a psychic beacon to draw the high fleet ever closer. As the gene stealer cult grows in power, they emerge from the shadows of their benighted world. Civil war rages, shaking the planet asunder. Then the skies darken with spores and the high fleet's voracious tendrils. The cultists exult at the fulfillment of prophecy and their ascension into the light. Their delusions die with them. Contact with the latest threat to the Imperium was made here. A star cluster in a distant spiral arm. The race is young, vigorous and technologically advanced. They call themselves the Tau. After decades of research from the Earth Cast's finest minds, we've never been this close. Our Empire's most ambitious military project, the Kor Orvesh Initiative, the promise of expanding our borders to new worlds, the confidence of enlightening distant civilizations with our philosophy. Let none doubt that the Tao Empire will bring unity to all. Let none doubt that now is our time. Tremble before the majesty of the Emperor. For we all walk in his immortal shadow.